the less that you get in, into your mouth and nose by masking, you have a more organized immune response and you don't get all these cytokines and inflammatory response and get super ill. And then the same effect makes you put out less virus. It's a small piece of cloth that's come between political parties and caused outrage around the world. Early on in the pandemic, health agencies and scientists couldn't agree on whether masks made a difference. Now there's growing evidence that they could be a simple solution to returning to normal life by helping us gain immunity. Dr. Monica Gandhi is a professor of medicine at the University of California, San Francisco. We are trying to say that we're gathering one more bit of evidence that could convince people to mask, not just that it reduces transmission to others and to yourself, but that if you do happen to get the infection, that you're less likely to get severe disease. Dr. Gandhi and her colleagues looked at 60 studies to find out what the characteristics and risk factors were for developing severe COVID-19 symptoms. And there was evidence masks may be the factor that led to the severity of the disease going down and more people being asymptomatic. We do call it a hypothesis because number one, it's never going to get a status beyond theory. And the reason is that you can't actually randomize half a city to wearing a mask and half a city to not, and then expose people to COVID-19. It would be unethical. We have to just gather more and more observational evidence that shows the hypothesis is likely. For example, we just did an analysis with some big data scientists at MIT, where we looked at a thousand counties across the US. And it seems that right before and after mask mandates, the severity of illness from COVID-19 after mask mandates went down as represented by hospitalizations. The hypothesis suggests that wearing a mask could become a form of inoculation that would generate at least a short-term immunity and slow the spread of the virus, similar to how a vaccine works. There was a study from Wayne State University in Detroit in the United States that showed that viral loads have been going down over time from April to June in people um, who are sick with COVID-19. Now viral load is different than viral inoculum. We're calling the inoculum the amount you get in and we're calling the viral load the amount that you put out. They are actually part and parcel of the same thing. They're almost two sides of the same coin because the less that you get in into your mouth and nose by masking it seems like you have a more organized immune response and you don't get as severe disease. You don't get all these cytokines and inflammatory response and get super ill. And then the same effect makes you put out less virus, that you are able to have a better adaptive immune response, put out less of a viral load. The team studied three lines of evidence, virology, epidemiology, and how countries responded. I'll start from the virology data. It turns out that in animal studies from many, many years, 1938 was the first study that we could find. It looks like in animals, this is apparently well known because I get all these veterinary scientists writing me and saying, yes, we've already, oh, we've always known this, that the amount of virus that you get in, the higher amount, the more sick you get. And we don't do these experiments in humans, meaning um, we don't give them virus and see if they get more or less sick. There's been only a couple of studies in humans like that. There's been an influenza A study uh, published in 2015 where people actually gave wild type influenza A to human volunteers. And the more you gave them, the more sick they got and the less you gave them, the less sick you got. There was a study in hamsters that was published in clinical infectious disease a couple of months ago where the little hamsters, they simulated masking of the hamsters. And not only were they less likely to get ill from COVID-19, meaning they were less likely to get the infection, they were less likely to get severe disease. They had very mild disease in the concept of masking. Experiments with animals will not convince everybody that masks make a difference. But Dr. Gandhi says there's also human epidemiology research. The example that we like to use the most is the tale of two cruise ships. And at the beginning, there were a lot of cruise ship outbreaks. The Diamond Princess was the famous one. It was the first one. And the rate of asymptomatic infection, people not having uh, symptoms at all, was about 40%. And that's the current value that the CDC says is the rate of people who don't have symptoms. However, in an Argentinian cruise ship outbreak, this time they didn't let people off, but they said, okay, all of you can have masks when there was an outbreak. And they gave all the passengers masks, 
They gave all the staff N95 masks, the passengers got surgical masks. And after an outbreak of over 120 people, the rate of asymptomatic infection was 81%. So it was twice as much as the original outbreaks. And then the third level of data that we've looked at is country level data. This is the crudest level because there's lots of things that can be going on in countries. But in a nutshell, countries that have universally masked since the beginning of the pandemic have low rates of severe illness and death. Countries like the United States that has a more complicated relationship with masking and it's been unevenly followed throughout the United States has higher levels of mortality and severe illness from the infection. President Donald Trump has only recently started to wear a mask in public and previously not always advocated their use, something he may be regretting now. Dr Gandhi says that the early mixed messaging in public health has made it difficult to convince people that masks can save lives. There was data from the very beginning that actually has been withdrawn now that masks don't work. Um, that was an unfortunate paper. Um, and yet there's been, if you look at PubMed at this point, there's 900 articles and counting on masking and COVID-19. We're past the point that we don't think it works. This works. The hypothesis we have is around severity of disease, but masking works to prevent transmission. I think we have to stop, sweep away the cobwebs of everything that went in the past and now start messaging appropriately. Soon, Dr. Gandhi's team will release a report that shows how hospitalisation rates went down in the American states that advocated masks. Does that mean that you know, if we all put masks on, that we could get back to normal life before a vaccine appears? You know, we wouldn't have to keep going into lockdowns and things like that. Yes, I think that is the implication that lockdowns, if you think about it, are a profoundly blunt instrument, and they are causing and have caused terrible economic depravity, terrible food insecurity, everything else that's coming along with closing down the economy, unemployment, all of that's going to have major health effects. We can only lock down for a short period of time. And what masks allow is the possibility of us being around each other in workplaces, in school places. And that is very hopeful news because it gives you some level of control over the pandemic while you're waiting for a vaccine. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and hit the bell button below for notifications. We'll see you next time.